What is up everybody and welcome back to the third video in this tutorial series. Uh, so we've gone over how to install the program and set it up in Blender and how to navigate the basics so far. We've created a very basic base. Next we're going to go into a couple of the other options. So on that same tab that we were on, that base creator tab, we are going to actually select this dungeon tile option here and this is going to allow us to create something more interesting with walls and doors and all that good stuff. So like before you can go ahead and uh, import any assets you need. I um, restarted Blender because um, I was doing something else but whenever you uh, whenever you load up Blender again the asset sh the um, add-on should still be enabled unless you disable it by unchecking that checkbox we checked at the beginning. So at least the very the very first script should show up in there and you can always click the uh, one you want to bring up the other tabs. And so we're going to stay on this base creator tab. And with the dungeon tile selected, I'm just going to leave mine as a uh, topper for now. I'm going to pick uh, this fantasy 2 and I'll go with, uh, I'll just click a random selection for now. And I'll click another one. Oh, looks fine. Maybe I'll click the change train. And I'm glad I uh, had this happen because this is a somewhat, not really common, but this is an error you might see every once in a while. Every once in a while, uh, just the way Blender's um, Boolean operations get completed, which is uh, how a lot of this operates. I won't go into the details, but basically when there's sort of overlapping geometry, which can occur when we're cutting pieces out of a base, which is what's going on behind the scene here. Uh, sometimes you'll see a weird result like this, which obviously isn't very good and can't be 3D printed. Um, and when that does happen, you usually can just click the Change Terrain button and that should eventually fix it. Um, so you might see that here and when we place uh, certain windows and doors, basically all you need to do is move the asset around a little bit or click change terrain and Blender will be able to figure things out. So that's what we did in this case. And so I'm going to stick with what we have here. Now when you're working with a dungeon tile shape here, that's basically a special shape that lets Blender know that we want to go ahead and add some windows and doors and walls and stuff like that later. So when we go to the customize tab this time, we'll see a lot of the same options. So we could go and uh, you know, um, place, oh, and this is one thing I forgot to cover in the last uh, tutorial, so I should definitely cover this now. Um, we covered adding these small assets, like the, uh, you know, little tiny ones that uh, get popped around the base there. Um, you can always move those around, like I covered in the last video with these sliders. You can delete individual assets, um, you can keep adding them again and you can click remove all assets to get rid of them but there's also um, oh you know what I did cover this so never mind never mind we did cover adding the large assets so scratch everything I just said you can do all the same stuff you did on the on the previous tutorial but there's also this top uh, this drop down this customization top down uh, excuse me drop down at the top and this time you can select assets which will bring up those old uh, options that we covered in the last one, or you can click Tile Assets, and this is where we can add things like walls and windows and doors. So, and you can always go back and switch between the two if you want. Previously, this was two separate tabs, so you had to click between them, which is a little annoying, but right now it should be a little, little easier to manage. Um, so, right now we're gonna add some walls. And the way this is set up is there's this wall drop down here, and this will pretty much set the side of the base that you'll be working on. And the way it's set up is wall one will be the top wall. If you're sort of looking at the uh, lettering at the top, this will be wall one, this will be wall two, this will be wall three, this will be wall four. And there's also a base option there uh, if you want to place things like columns. <coughs> So I'm going to stick with wall one for right now. The wall direction will be sort of the direction that the wall you're working on faces. So the default is internal, which will be an in a wall pretty much facing this way towards the base itself, basically creating like the inside of a room. But you can also um, add an external wall, which will face outwards, or mirrored, which is both of those, and an open lock. Uh, wall, and I'll show an example of each of those um, 
once we actually add them in. So you start with this asset type and we'll select wall and this is where you'll select the specific type of thing you want to add. So we'll go with wall and then I'm going to click one of these, pick one of these walls here and I'll just click one of these. Okay, add asset and you'll see, oh actually you know what, I had it set to external so you can see the wall is actually facing out right now. Um, you can change that if you want but just since we've already got it in here, I'll go over these sliders. You can change the thickness. And with the external walls, it's offset a little bit to give you a, a little bit of space there, and, um, which might be useful. You can change the height by using this slider here. You can change the width if for whatever reason you feel the need to do that. And if you do change the width, you can change the uh, X location, which will move it side to side. Um, and then if you change the, uh, the width back to what it was, it'll be a little bit off, but you can just move that X location a little bit and it'll snap back in place. So that's pretty much all those sliders. Um, if we change this to internal now, and uh, I'll pick a different wall, click Add Asset, that'll replace it with a wall like this. So the actual sort of design of the wall is facing inwards. And like I said, you can change that to a mirrored, which will be both sides. If you click Add Asset there, you'll see there's a design on this side. And there's a design on this side here. So that's what that'll look like. And the final option is uh, an open lock wall, which um, some people want. I don't know if that many people are interested in this, but I made the, uh, the option available just in case. And this will basically take that wall and um, add open lock parts to it. And when you do that, at the end of everything, all the open lock parts uh, will, get, uh, will get exported separately. So you'll get a separate wall and a base. And I should mention, if you want to do that, you should start with uh, an open lock part in the uh, base creator uh, tab. But uh, I should have mentioned, once you start adding assets, you can't go back and change this, this tab. So keep that in mind. If you want to create some open lock parts, um, do that from the start and add that to the base. But for right now, I'll just give a demonstration on the walls. So if I were to add this, it would look something like this. And it may not come in perfectly at first, and maybe not all of the walls will look perfect with these, just because basically what they are is they're little snappable pieces that are built into the wall. So some, some of the walls, since they're not all uniformly thick, some of them have little uh, designs cut into them and that sort of thing. You might need to rescale the thickness a little bit. Um, and keep in mind when you do that, you may want to snap to the side to make sure there's a little distance between the wall and the actual base so that they'll still clip together. Because I can make this super thick, but if I import it that way, it's going to have a uh, hard time connecting with the base. So this one might not be the greatest example of uh, this specific wall because it's got some sort of uh, cut-in designs there that it'll sort of make the open lock pieces pretty obvious. Might might actually not look that bad, but. I'll pick, a, I'll pick another one real quick, just so we can get another example. Yeah, so this one looks a little bit better, because it's a little bit more uh, uniform, I guess. So this would look uh, pretty good. You can't really see any of the open lock parts through there, but that's an option if you want to uh, want to do that. Um, I am just going to um, delete this for now. You can either delete an individual asset, click clear wall which will remove any assets including walls and doors and windows and stuff like that from that specific wall you have selected up here or you can click remove all which will get rid of any uh, wall or window or, or uh, door assets so I'm going to stick with that uh, just the default internal wall for now and uh, I'll, I'll go back to that one we just had because that was kind of cool and yeah this is what you start with so you'll import a base like that. And like I said before, you can change the thickness. You can get some results that look pretty, pretty bad if you drag it out way too far. So keep in mind how thick you want it to be. And again, these uh, numbers are in millimeters. You can change the height and you can change the width if you really want to. That's pretty much it for adding walls. In this same asset type dropdown, you can add doors. So I'll go with, let's see. Uh, I'll go with this tavern door, add that. And um, you may want to resize these as well, depending on the scale you're, you're going for, or the size you want to eventually print these out with, um, or whatever your 
going for pretty much. So you can change the height, the thickness like before, the width, all that good stuff. I don't really have anything in mind here, so I'm just going to build something that gives me enough space to place everything else for demonstration purposes. So I'll move this aside and maybe uh, adjust the thickness down a little bit. Um, I will now select a window. So I'll go up here and select window. And I'll select one of these ones that say open on them now. And what that means is uh, basically it's it'll be a window or a door that has an open section that cuts out of the wall. So you'll notice if I click this uh, elven window here and click add asset, it will add it to the wall and you can kind of see it on this one. The design kind of gets in the way and makes it hard to see, but you can kind of see the uh, black through there. It's actually cutting out of the wall. And you'll notice uh, by default it places assets in the middle of the wall. So sometimes you'll get scenarios like this where it'll, uh, some assets will be overlapping. So you'll obviously want to move those a little bit. And uh, I'm trying to think sometimes, uh, sometimes maybe you'll have a particularly thick wall. So an asset will not necessarily be visible when it imports. So for example, if I were to change the current asset here, to uh, the wall, make this super thick, and then, I don't know why you do that, but if you wanted to do that, you could do that, and then add a window, it might not be visible at first, so keep that in mind, um, might be obvious, but the, the assets you select, all the assets in the scene attached to the current wall will be in this drop down here, and you can switch between those using the drop down. Uh, I think the names are a little bit more intuitive here than in the uh, previous section with the assets, but still not ideal to select them from a drop down. Um, we go over the terrain creator. I think I've found a much better way to get it to work. So hopefully we'll implement that in, uh, in this module as well uh, in future updates. But for now, you've got to select those from the drop down. So that's pretty much windows and doors. And there's one other new, there's a new asset type, sort of new, that I added in the uh, in this new update. It basically works the same as windows, um, but it's a little maybe a, a little bit different. So I'm going to give an example of that too. So I'm going to add a uh, wall here. And I've added um, what I'm calling kind of uh, wall decoration assets. And uh, they're pretty much the same as windows in the terms of the way they operate in the program. But there'll be anything with a prefix of decor in front of them. And what these are pretty much just little wall decorations. So anything like um, little panels or boxes or shields or anything you'd use to decorate a wall. So um, I've created a bunch of cool cyberpunk ones that are pretty much uh, little panels that you can add. And when you click Add Asset, it'll, it'll just be cool cyberpunk parts. But I've added some of these for each of the new add-ons. So, you know, I've got something, I've got things like shields. Well, I'll move this one out of the way first um, and make it a little bit, a little bit smaller first. And just move that up. So I'll add this. Uh, I'll add this shield. You can add things like that, and I think it'll allow for a lot more cool customization when it comes to a lot of things. So I think that should be a really cool. Uh, I wouldn't really say a new feature because it's pretty. It, they operate the same as Windows, but um, I think they'll allow for a lot more customization. So little things, just random little wall decorations like that. I think those will be very cool. And uh, another thing I did add specifically for these is there's a rotation button that will uh, allow you to rotate these as well, which may work better for some assets than others or may look better on some than others. And it will work on Windows too. I don't know if that will be particularly useful, but it will definitely uh, allow for more customization with these wall decoration assets. So keep that in mind. I think you can get some really cool results with those. And that's pretty much it for the main categories of assets we can add. We can also go to base here and we can click on column and we can add any of the columns. And I should point out that unlike in the uh, place, unlike placing the assets, you don't select a specific theme here. This will just have every every asset from every theme you've imported, which was how I set this up originally and really the reason why I added the import uh, options. You don't have to have everything in there at once and scroll through a giant drop down. 
Um, I think probably in the next version I'll change that so there is a theme drop down. But uh, for right now, you'll just see everything from the themes you've imported. So I'll just pick a random column here, add asset, and that'll add that in the center. And just like with the others, you can change the height. And for columns, there's also this uniform width and thickness, which makes it so that when you change the width, and it'll change the thickness as well, and vice versa. And you can, of course, uh, move those around all over the place. Um, so there's that. And there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh, right. You can also add an open lock column. Selecting internal, external, or mirrored won't make any difference. It'll just import it right in the middle of the scene. But if you add an open lock, uh, you can also add an open lock column. And um, like with the walls, not every column will look perfect on these because the open lock parts are kind of uniform height and width and thickness, which all the columns aren't. Some of them are, you know, uh, have interesting designs on them that make certain parts thinner and thicker. So some of them might not look great. I'll see how this one looks. Um, if we add this, it'll basically add an open lock part. And if we if we had added an open lock wall, this would line up well with that, but it's not now. And you'll notice you can still see the open lock part very visibly there. You can just adjust the white, the width and the thickness, and that'll uh, sort of wrap around that open lock part and give you something like this. And so for these ones, um, you can use the rotation and what that's going to do is pretty much just, uh, oh, sorry about that. That's not what I meant to do. Um, what I meant to do was you can click the, I remember, I think the X location, and that'll shift it, or the Y location, and shift it down. So that's how you'll decide uh, which side you want to place it on. It doesn't really matter where you place it, because these all export as separate parts in the end anyway, but, uh, just for sort of organizational purposes that might be helpful in uh, setting up your scene. So keep that in mind. And that is pretty much all we need to do for these. There is one other new feature. Uh, I think I mentioned this, some of this in the um, assets section. Uh, like I mentioned, there is an exports tab, or render tab rather, and the export option. The batch export, I don't know how useful that'll be, but it will only work on the normal bases. It's not going to work on these dungeon tiles just because there's too much customization and, and variance there. Uh, so it won't do anything if you click batch export here. But there is this score lines option, which was uh, available in the original version, but it wasn't really very good good. Um, and the reason for that was um, there are a few operations in the previous versions of Blender that weren't as good as the ones that are in there now. So now there are things we can do that are a little bit better than we could before. Um, I'm not going into too many details. Basically this will add a little grid to your base. So you can click on 2x2 two two, and that will pretty much add a little grid like this. And it may look better on certain bases than others. Um, but pretty much it'll just put some score lines in the middle and you can adjust the depth by messing with this slider here. And that went too far. So however, however, you, however deep you need those to be, you can change, make it a two by two grid, a three by three grid, or a four by four grid. And that's pretty much how those work. So. Um, those also might yield some inconsistent results sometimes depending on the base you're on, but it should work a lot better than in the previous version. So I think that's really cool and uh, hopefully some people get some use out of that. And then as before, it will, you can just click the export button and that'll export everything or it'll export, you know, the, uh, separate parts if you created an open lock part. And that is pretty much it for the uh, dungeon tile section of this tutorial. Next up we're going to go over one more new feature on the base creator module and then after that we are going to talk about the uh, the other module in this program, the terrain creator. So thanks for tuning in guys and I hope to see you guys in the next video.